Hello and welcome to this Swift tutorial and in this video we will be taking a look at how to make and create your own web browser. So you have seen Safari before and in this video we are going to make an attempt at replicating Safari and creating our very own web browser with a search field, with a back button, with a forward button, with a refresh button and all that good stuff. So that's what we are going to be taking a look at in this video. And if that is something you want to do with me, then go ahead, open up Xcode and we are going to create a new Xcode project. So we're going to head over to Xcode and create a new project. And I'm going to make this a single view application, clicking next. And I'm going to call this my web browser. Uh, there we go. And I'm just going to save it on my desktop. You can save it wherever you want to, does not matter. And let's head over to our storyboard and start laying out our web browser. Now what our browser is going to have is it's going to first of all contain a search bar so that we're able to search for an internet address. That's always a good thing. So let's drag that in. And then we're also going to need a toolbar. So let's search for that. And I'm just going to drag it in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to change click on this item button and we are going to go to attributes inspector and change the system icon to be, uh, I'm just going to choose rewind for now because that looks the most like a normal back button. But if you're extra pro, you're going to make that yourself. And then you can simply set the image of that button right here to be a normal back button. And then we are also going to uh, have an item. So we are going to use a bar button item and we're going to place that in here. And we're going to change that to the refresh button. So let's see if we can find that here, refresh, there we go. And then we're going to need one more and that is going to be our next button. And let's see if we can find an icon and I'm just going to go with fast forward. Now, as you can see, these buttons aren't completely beautiful um, outlined. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a flexible space bar button item. And this will make sure that the space between our buttons is being adjusted so that it looks nice. So place one between each button and then the layout is going to look like that. So that is basically how we want it. And of course, we are also going to need our web view else we will have problems displaying our internet site. So let's drag that in also and stretch it wide. And now you can go ahead and place your constraints, but because I am on an iPhone seven, I'm just going to launch it on an iPhone seven and then there will be no need for any constraints. Uh, so let's bring up our split view here and we can start dragging in our items. So the first item we're going to drag in is our search bar. I'm just going to call this my search uh, bar and connect that up as an outlet. Then I'm also going to, uh, let's see, we are also going to need our web view. I'm going to name this my web view as an outlet, import that also. And then I'm going to drag in my three buttons down here. So let's drag in our back button here. And I'm going to name it back simple and easy. Let's make sure that this is an action because we want it to trigger an action. We want it to go back when we press the back button. So there we go, an action. We're also going to drag in our next button. Next, also make sure that this is an action so that it triggers an action when we press the button. And then also our refresh button control, drag it in. And I'm just going to name it refresh simple and easy and make it an action. Let's connect that up also. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set a uh, default site for our web view so that when the user launches uh, the application, we are actually going to display a website and not just a blank white screen. The way we're going to do that is we're going to simply say my web view dot load request and the request is an URL request. And we're going to base this request on an URL, which we are going to, and then we're simply going to do like this. And our URL is going to be made up of a string. And this string is going to be HTTPS colon slash slash www.google.com. You can make this whatever site you want. That is of course your choice. And then add another parentheses and 
now we should be good to go let's see if there are any problems a force unwrap you're going to get that xcode so now we have launched a site on our web view and what i think we're going to do before we launch our app for the first time is we're just going to add some functionalities in here so first of all our back button and what we're going to do is we're going to see if we are actually able to go back so we're going to say if my web view can go back uh, which means that we actually have a page to go back to then we're going to say my web view dot go back else it's not going to do anything then we are let's see going to choose our next function right here that is connected to our next button and we're going to do the exact same thing here we're going to say if my web view can go forward and if that is the case then we're going to access our web view and we are going to go forward let's see go forward so as you can see very simple actually very simple commands here uh, but it's going to do the job and then we are also going to implement our refresh button which is simply saying my web view dot reload and here we're going to have our control so let's launch it on our iphone 7 simulator and see what we've got so far so here we go here we have google and it looks like it's working let's just try to search for something let's search for dog and we're going to search here and here we got a dog let's try our back button so i'm going to click that that works let's go back and let's try a refresh and that works beautifully so now we have implemented a web browser that's able to go back forward and refresh and the next step now is going to be to uh, enable our user to type something in into the search field and then search for that uh, website so let's see how we're going to go about doing that so we're going to head over to xcode again and we are going to get some space here and then we are going to utilize a function now what we need to do before we can utilize that function is we are actually before we do that i'm just going to make a quick fix here because sometimes a user is going to type in http instead of https and in order to be able to use http links we have to do something in our info.plist file and all we do is we select an item then we click plus and we say app transport security settings uh, we click the down arrow right here and then we click plus one more time and then we say allow arbitrary loads and we set that to yes so now we are also able to open http links which can be a good thing so now let's head over to our storyboard and we're going to make the change that is required here in order for us to be able to search for something so we're going to select our search bar control drag it up to the yellow button here and we're going to select the delegate now we can head over to our view controller again and we can do some funky stuff up, up here uh, we can add our ui search bar delegate and this will allow us to implement a function that's named search bar uh, search button click uh, which is a function that listens for um, that is attached to our search bar and then when the user presses the search button uh, in the search bar then that function right here is going to fire now what we want to do here is we want of course to open the website that the user has inputted so what we first are going to do is we're going to resign uh, the keyboard so the way we do that is we simply say my search bar dot resign uh, first responder let's see resign uh, first responder there we go the keyboard is now hidden and now we're going to extract the url from the search query the way we do that is we simply say if let url is equal to url and we're going to make our url out of a string and this string is going to be the text within contained within our search bar and in order to access access that we simply say my search bar dot text and that's it now uh, we probably need a force and wrap and then we're going to uh, in here if that works if we're able to cast our string to an url and save it within our url constant we are going to open this in our web view so my web view um, dot load request and request that we're going to load is an url request and we're going to base this request upon our url that we just extracted and if that doesn't work for some reason the url might not be valid then we can do some error handling down here 
So th that's basically it. So now let's try to launch our app. And now we should be able to search, uh, type in a web address uh, containing HTTP and www and then search for it and we should be able to see that website. Uh, now, as you will see for now, you have to type in HTTP uh, colon slash slash www. Uh, so, um, but that is of course something that you can change later, but right now we will have to input that. So HTTP colon slash slash www dot, um, what are we going to type in? We can type in yahoo.com and I'm going to search for this and now we should be able to get it and we do. So now that is at least working and we can go back to google.com. And as you will see, this does not work. If I don't have my HTTP, I do need that in front. Um, so let's give it that HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com. And if I now search for that, we're back to Google. Now, if you want to change that, you can simply work with some formatting. Uh, you can do some checks if it contains www. If it doesn't add that to the link, if it doesn't contain HTTPS, add that to the link. Uh, that's definitely something you can do. It's not something that we're going to do in this video, but if you want to see it in a video, then just comment down below. But it's really going to be just about um, analyzing the string that you got from your search bar and then adding uh, those key elements like www or HTTP if it isn't already contained. Uh, so that's it for our search bar. And now what we're going to do is we are going to something that I forgot to show. And that is that right now the user is not getting any response as to whether or not the web view is loading. And that is something that we do want to provide our user with. So let's see if we now tape in, type in HTTP colon slash slash www dot New York Times, which is a bit heavier site dot com. You will see that there are no refresh icons, not even up here, which we are used to. So that is something we are going to change. We are going to add a refresh button or a, I mean, an activity indicator. And we are going to utilize some functions for that. The first one is web view. Uh, we probably need to add a delegate in order to do this. So let's head over to our storyboard, select our web view. We're starting to get pro at this, then control drag over to our yellow button and select the delegate. And then we're going to head over to our view controller. Once again, head up here and simply type in UI web view delegate. And this will allow us to use the function that is named web view did start load. And this function is going to get, uh, be called each time our web view starts loading. And now what we can do is we can say UI application dot shared dot is network. Uh, let's see, is network activity indicator visible? And we're going to set that to true. Now we're also going to utilize another function that's called web view did finish load. And this we are going to set to false. So let's copy this and we can paste that in. And I'm going to set this to false. So that means that the activity indicator will be displaying once we uh, the web view starts loading something and it will hide once it's done loading something. So let's see if that is working as we want it to. So let's launch our app here. So here we got our browser let's type in HTTP colon slash slash www.nitimes.com not that bomb but dot com and as we'll see now we got our activity indicator up there which is running and it's probably going to yeah there we go so now we are actually displaying some kind of activity when our user is using our web view and also when we are going to refresh it also shows up because our web view is now loading a request so this was a quick little video on how to create a web browser. Now, if you enjoyed it, make sure that you click the subscribe button down below so that you stay tuned for the latest videos that I will be putting out in the nearest future on Swift coding. So make sure to subscribe. And also, as always, thank you very much for watching. Take care.